Hello, welcome to Midsummer's Music 30th Season Reimagined. My name is Allison Fleck and I'm Executive Director of Midsummer's Music. On behalf of the board, staff, and musicians, we are pleased that you are joining us for our 30th season. This summer, we present six programs online with several offerings weekly. All streamed events are free and we are thankful to our sponsors and donors for making that possible. For the complete schedule, please visit our website or Facebook page. Summers in Door County are about celebrating this area's strong Scandinavian heritage and the summer solstice, when daylight is so prolonged in contrast to the long winter nights. We offer programs that embody this joyous spirit and to spread it beyond the solstice throughout the entire year. Rather than celebrating a specific date, Midsummer's music celebrates a, uh, the spirit of the solstice uh, celebration with fine music and friendship in stunningly beautiful locations. Midsummer's music uh, has world-class artists. Uh, we continue our partnerships with local or organizations, including Woodwalk Gallery and Ride on Door County. The Midsummer's Music Quartet in Residence, the Griffin String Quartet, provides concerts, education, and outreach programs throughout the calendar year. This year, we have a reimagined season, which features a new set of programs that are highly diverse and inclusive featuring the works of five female composers, four composers of color, and a wide range of nationalities. Please visit our website and learn more about our musicians, sponsors, and various programs, including the 30th Anniversary Gala on October 10th. If you have questions, please comment on our Facebook or email us at midsummersmusic at gmail.com. We hope you enjoy today's program. Thanks again for joining us. Hello and welcome to Midsummer's Music's 30th anniversary season, a virtual season, but full of amazing music, whether or not we can be there in person. I'm Lori Skelton from Wisconsin Public Radio. Um, I'm actually sitting in my office, the music library at Wisconsin Public Radio. Um, behind me, there's a wall of vinyl. And in front of me, there is this brand new technology that is bringing us all together. So I thought it was a good juxtaposition. We are meeting for concerts with Midsummer's Music, doing one of the things I think Midsummer's Music does best, bringing us composers we are not necessarily familiar with. And in this case, it's three women. Three women, all who are either French or have French sounding names, and all are whom amazing composers, and we get to hear amazing musicians perform their music. Our thanks first to the MMG Foundation, to, Sta to, to Sandy Zingler and Barb Johnson for sponsoring these concerts. And of course, we want to thank the Donald and Carol Cress Pavilion, which is where all of our artists are playing this concert. If you'd like more information on the musicians, on the composers, or on the pieces that you're going to be hearing, you'll find the Midsummer's Music e-program book under the virtual events tab at the website, midsummersmusic.com. That website is also where you will find the online fundraising gala hosted by Eric Lewis on October the 10th. The 10 violins that have been decorated by Door County artists will be auctioned off on October the 10th. There will also be some silent auction items up for bid. So if you're out and about in Door County before October the 10th, you have the opportunity to see those violins at some of the art galleries, but you can always find pictures of the violins, again, on the events tab at midsummersmusic.com. You can make a tax-deductible contribution to Midsummer's Music at any time. Again, you can find that at midsummersmusic.com. The musicians that we're going to be hearing on this program include violinists Anne Palin and David Perry, violist Allison Fleck, cellist Greg Sauer and Ryan Louie, and pianist Ginny Yu.
So I said, one of the things that Midsummer's music is so good about is bringing us composers that we don't necessarily know. The first composer is one where, whenever I run across Melanie or Mel Bonis, I always think of Midsummer's music because these are the musicians who introduced me to her in the first place. Here is a composer born in Paris in 1858, uh, loved music, was passionate about music, but didn't have a great deal of support. So she taught herself and she was so good at teaching herself, she actually came to the attention of César Franck, who was then the head of the Paris Conservatory. He arranged for private lessons and eventually got her into the conservatory where she more than held her own with the likes of Vincent Dundee and Gabriel Kiernay and one guy named Claude Debussy. We're going to hear one of the over 300 pieces of music that she wrote, something she cast for traditional piano trio, piano, cello, and violin, music written in 1909. And it's pretty self-explanatory, soir et matin, evening and morning. The evening is going to be lyrical, me, and morning. I, I can't tell if this is morning before or after you've had your coffee because it's a little bit restless. Uh, it's, it's definitely anticipating an energetic and very good day. So please welcome pianist Jeannie Yu, violinist David Perry, cellist Greg Sauer, morning and evening, or actually in proper order, evening and morning from Melanie or Mel Bonis.
So that was Melanie Bonis and Evening and Morning, Soir et Matin, from our wonderful Midsummer's Music musicians. Our next piece comes from Germaine Taillefer, who was the sole female member of an influential music group in Paris in the 20s, Les Six, The Six. They all wanted to bring about in music the same changes that were coming to the visual arts and to literature, all that wonderful flowering of artistic freedom in Paris in the 20s. But even though they were a group, they were all very much about, we are a group only to advance our own individual voices. We aren't here to push any kind of a united movement. And Germaine Taillefer was very, very good about an individual voice. We know she worked for a time with Maurice Ravel, but she was decidedly not an impressionist. She didn't share Ravel's big uh, color palette when it came to instrumental writing. Uh, she tended to write things that were a little bit leaner, uh, things that felt very, very intimate, uh, things that didn't need to be big. Uh, she originally wrote her piano trio rather early. She finished it about 1917 and finished three movements. She would go on in 1978 to revise the trio and then add a movement. You can expect a mix of styles in this trio. The opening movement, I guess you could say, is the closest thing she ever got to writing Impressionist music, while the second movement has got the rhythmic vitality you'd find in pieces by Stravinsky. The third movement, probably the warmest movement of this trio, has a, more than a bit of nostalgia, more than a bit of gentle looking back. But that fourth movement, this is all exuberance. This is all about the possibility of all the great things that are to come in music. Germaine Taillefer passed away in 1983 at the age of 91. She was active until the end of her life. And we have in this particular trio, I guess you could say music from both ends of her life. You'll hear pianist Ginny Yu, violinist David Perry, and cellist Greg Sauer with the piano trio of Germaine Taillefer.
Hello, I'm Jared Santek, Artistic Director at Right On Door Cat. Happy to be able to continue our collaboration with Midsummer's Music by Concerts. Today, our poet, Guevara, Maurizio is Director of the Creative Writing Program at the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and makes his summer home in A. Carver. Please welcome Maurizio. TV. When Freddie went completely blind because of the diabetes, he sold his television set to us for $5. We had to take the 56C down 2nd Avenue past the Jones and Lachlan Coke furnace to replace two of the tubes, and that cost us four more dollars. The TV was black and white, which meant that everything was in different shades of gray. The projects where we lived were gray. A yellow dress was gray, were gray. Blood on the clothes of Cambodian children was a dark gray, like shadows. Walter Cronkite told us the moon was pencil gray. He showed a picture of the sea of tranquility. He said there were highlands yet to be explored. He said to solve the problem of hovering would require a precise rocket throttle. The planet rising above the slope of the horizon is Earth, and you are blue. For Louisa Adolfa Lebeau, the name sounds French, but actually she was born in the southwestern part of Germany in 1852. She may not have had plans to be a composer early on in her life, but she was a keen musician. She began studying the piano when she was five years old, and by the time she was 18, she was being heard as a soloist in some of the great works like Beethoven's Emperor Concerto. What we're going to be listening to is a piece that, good luck finding it any other place but a Midsummer's Music concert. The string quintet that was written over 120 years ago at the moment exists on YouTube only in its first movement. So here is where we find Midsummer music at its absolute strongest. Great musicians performing music that, in some cases, they may not even have known about. I certainly didn't know about this quintet before I found out Midsummer's music was doing it. I'm very excited to get the chance to finally hear the whole thing. Our violinists for this piece are David Perry and Anne Palin, violist Allison Fleck, and cellist Greg Sauer and Ryan Louie. Louisa Adolfa Lebeau's String Quintet in C minor.
Hi, welcome Ann Palin, a uh, violinist with Midsummer's Music. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm just so happy to be here this summer. 
Oh, this is great. And thank you for taking your time to answer a few questions. Yes. Uh, this is an opportunity for people to learn a little bit more about you. I wonder, uh, could you just, uh, they can go online and there's an ebook where they can find your bio, but maybe just the, you know, the basics of what we should know about Ann Palin. <laughs> Well, um, professionally, I'm, I'm a violinist with the Lyric Opera Orchestra. I have been there for about 30 years, and I have been coming up to Midsummers for the past probably about six summers, and this has been a real treat for me to be able to do a, a little bit of opera and a little bit of chamber music and a little bit of Chicago and a little bit of Door County. So this is a, a very nice balance in my life. You're hitting the best of both. I, that's what I think. Yes. Uh, so you said six years or so for uh, Midsummers in Door County. What kind of things do you do uh, besides rehearsing in concerts? It's hard to believe there is extra time. But if there is extra time, what do you do in Door County? Well, usually my family is able to come up for uh, weekends or uh, maybe my children will come up for a week when my husband uh, is working. And they drag me around happily. They drag me around to uh, miniature golf and the ice cream places and all the great restaurants. But as a family, probably our favorite thing to do is uh, get an ice cream cone and sit on the, the beach at Sister Bay and watch the sunset. And every time we do this, it's, it's magical, it's different, and we just cherish that. Um, and we think about it in the, the dark days of uh, Chicago winters. It is a beautiful spot, and I have noticed people who do hang out there, and I personally love to walk along the water right there. So, again, you know what to do and how to do it. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering about, since you mentioned lyric, uh, opera, what it's like for you to be a full-time professional violinist in an opera company, but then the way you just so naturally, easily come and be this professional violinist with chamber music, they, they are different. So what's that like for you? Well, I was thinking about this, um, and I, I think I could probably sum it up um, by just saying it's a question of space. In a, in a quartet or a quintet, you're usually dealing with a very small space, it's very intimate, and so your, your ears are very uh, close. You know, you're listening to somebody right next to you and then right across from you. In an opera pit situation, you're listening to vast numbers of people at, at huge distances, like the singers are on the stage, uh, I mean, just really far away. Uh, the conductor's on the podium, you might be close or you might be at the other side of the pit. And then also you're listening to, um, you know, for instance, I'm on one side of the pit opposite of people like, uh, you know, the tuba player or the, or the, um, the wind players, uh, trombones or something. And so there will be times in an opera where, where I will have to clue in to what they're doing in order to be with, with the orchestra. So it's um, really a question of knowing who to listen to and how to gauge the distance um, from being in an in a opera pit. And, and chamber music is just uh, intimate and close and uh, wonderful. Yes, that's, that's great. And I, I've often thought about how it is that we, we as orchestral musicians, should play like chamber musicians. And then ironically, when we're playing chamber music, we should think how can we fill that sound and cross the bridge? So um, they really do uh, work hand in hand. Uh, this season, this mini reimagined season, uh, we have five composers uh, who are female. And I was really excited to see that list of uh, women composers on our program. I wonder what you think about playing these pieces and if there's anything that uh, specifically touched your thoughts? Well, I think what I was um, was struck by is just the, the different personalities of these composers and how wonderful it is to get to know them and um, how, you know, Midsummer is known for doing pieces that people are not so familiar with along with pieces like Brahms and Beethoven, but these pieces um, are kind of discovered by Jim, and it's really great that he has extended this to women composers. I know this is not new for him. He's, he's featured women composers uh, for many, many years, but um, this, this year is a particularly rich season for women composers, and it's, it's just nice to see the different personalities of all of them and, um, and, and just to discover new music. And the program that we're uh, featuring uh, today is three women composers all on one program, and they all happen to be French, but like you said, 
even that doesn't tie them together. They're just so completely uh, different. And it's a wonderful program uh, to have those three women composers. You mentioned the other day that you might be doing something else with women composers this year. You want to give a little plug for what's <laughs> coming up for you after this summer? <laughs> well, there's a plan in, in March um, to do uh, a, a program that features all women quartet composers, uh, or composers of quartets, uh, women, and the group itself will be composed of all women. So this will be um, just a celebration of of womanness and uh, well, that's and great. When you get the the date and the time, make sure you tell Midsummers, and we'll put it on our website. We We'd be happy to uh, share that information. It sounds like a fun program. Thanks. And while this is so fun, getting to learn more about you, I'm going to now put you under the real pressure. I'm going to do rapid fire with you. I did tell you kind of what this is, but you've not heard any of this until now. I have not. And the idea is that you don't dwell on thinking about it. You just have to, the first thing that comes into your mind, okay? okay. This could be embarrassing. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll make it go by fast, rapid. If you could be any animal, what would it be and why? Oh, I would be a dog because dogs are smart and loyal. Oh, what's one of the things you'd put on your bucket list? Um, I would like to go to South America. Nice. Are you a morning or a night person? I used to be a night person, and now I'm a morning person. What are you afraid of? Um, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about your favorite book growing up? Growing up, um, I used to love um, A Wrinkle in Time. I still do love them. I do love that one, too. Uh, cold or hot? Cold. If you won a million dollars, what would you buy? I would buy a uh, college education for my two children and um, shoes. Oh, nice. nice. <laughs> All right. Well, then what's your favorite color? What would your shoes look like? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, blue. Blue. Uh, when, what do you think of when I say fruit? Uh, apples. And what advice did you get that would be the most rewarding? This too shall pass. I thought you might say that. Stop. I've heard you say that before. <laughs> All right, I'll stop there. That was really fun. Thank you, Anne, so much for being here this summer, and thank you for spending this uh, extra time with us today. Thank you, Allison. All right. This is certainly something to celebrate, something that is new for many of us. This is music of Louisa Adolfa Lebeau, her string quintet in C minor, and it was performed by the wonderful musicians of Midsummer's Music in Door County. I know most of us who are not in Door County are missing the beautiful scenery and the chance to truly interact face to face with our incredible musicians. But I've been so impressed with how those musicians have been working to find new ways to stay connected to keep growing artistically and to pass their artistic creativity onto all of us. Our thanks also to Right On Door County for their support, their work with the musicians throughout the summer and who knows, hopefully beyond. Our musicians today, violinist David Perry and Ann Pellin, violist Allison Fleck, cellist Greg Sauer and Ryan Louie, pianist Jean Yu, and of course, the creative powerhouses behind 30 years of Midsummer's music, Jim and Jean Birkenstock. You both are phenomenal. I'm looking forward to seeing what the next years bring. Thank you all so much for being a part of this today. And don't forget, you can always make a tax deductible contribution to support Midsummer's Music now and well into the future through the website, midsummersmusic.com. From Wisconsin Public Radio, I'm Lori Skelton. Thank you all. We'll see you soon.